Okay, everybody. Tough night. Grab your coffee. And let's crack on. 4.2. So this one should be conceptually simpler for me to comprehend. 4.2. Because now we're dealing with a force. I can deal with forces. So, famous last words. Same sort of problem, but this time we've got a force in the end, and therefore I'm expecting it to go downwards. If it doesn't, then I'll be upset. Uh, same sort of jazz. We'll have this as length L. Uh, this is point A, point B. So what I would probably do normally do a problem like this is uh, start off with a little bit of reactions so I find my forces in the y direction so I've got minus b I'm going to have a reaction at minus p sorry I'm going to have a reaction at b here so plus rb equals zero rb equals p then I'd move on to my shear force diagram. So for that, I'm going to take a cut through the body. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm just going to do a shear force diagram. So shear force, shear force diagram. So it's going to be your function Q. So it drops by P, moves along, moves along, moves along, gets to B, and then goes up again. It should be kind of flat. Now, from that, we can see that uh, we are going to end up with a bending moment diagram. So you can integrate that if you want. Or, so some of you, Brian doesn't like me integrating. So we'll go back to stress level 1 approach. So I'm going to take the cut through, measure the distance from there to the pivot point. And then I'm going to um, take moments about the pivot looking back. So I think I need to do this. M. Um. I'm going to be positive and negative. It's been negative, hasn't it? Feels wrong. Ah, this is negative. Yeah, it, w it will be negative. Okay, so we will be summing up our moments as we cut through. So by putting this cut in here, we imagine that we've exposed an internal bending moment. And that we've exposed a, a shear force. Well, we're not interested in that because I'm onto the bending moment diagram. So, but uh, in the book, they're going to define that pointing downwards. I call it v, v. That's my shear force. Not worried about that. My bending moment here. So, this is the M. Yeah, so that's referring to this clockwise thing here. So this is by cutting through the beam, I've magically exposed this turning moment. So we've got M, and it's positive. Um, and then that needs to be balanced by all the other forces that I see left of me. So that is anti-clockwise, so minus Px. Okay. Right, so, well, shear force diagram would, would tell me that that's what I needed anyway. So the M graph is going to be a minus px and x equals zero. We get no bending moment at the tip, 
but we're getting a lot of bending moment at the base here, which is what I expect. Okay, so if you think about, uh, I've got anything to burn around here? Think about me trying to burn my book. So I'm going to apply the load like that. You can see there's a lot of bending going on here. This is turning, and this is kind of going, although it's deformed a lot, you know, there's a lot of deflection, but this is now starting going off straight, right? So you can see this is where we're getting a lot of curve close to the, the base. So a lot of bend in there, not much bend in there. What am I trying to do? The equation, uh, da, 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 da. okay. So let's go back and grab this one. Uh, right. So this time I'm going to multiply. Well, okay, I'll do this. So I've I want to integrate the the M equation and the M equation is that divided by EI. So let's get this these guys, the EIs out of the way and stick them up here for now. So we go EI like that and we now just got a nice M thing which is a function of X which we're going to integrate. So that will become, that's my minus px, I put that in there. So we've got force times the distance. I'm going to integrate the deflection with respect to distance twice. So, well, let's do it once. I'll call this c1. I'll start using constants and call them C1, C2, C3, and so on. So, probably, personally speaking, I'd probably stop here and be looking for applying a boundary condition, see if I can make the C1 into something. And the boundary condition would be the fact that, let's think about the, gra the gradient. Okay, so although we're getting a lot of bend in here, the gradient would be be uh, zero at this point. So it's going off this point like that. So the gradient's then dropping. Okay. Is that making sense? So at that point, we're going off in this direction, and then at the tip, we're going off in this direction. But then when I look he at here, it's nice and flat. When I look here, it's curved. Um, <laughs> right, so I will apply that boundary condition. So boundary condition one is EI, the gradient when X equals L is zero. So minus PL squared over two plus C1. So therefore C1 equals PL squared divided by 2. Okay, so let's substitute that into here and carry on and integrate again. So we've now got EI delta Y over delta X minus P X squared over 2 plus p l squared over 2. Let's integrate this again. Constant. So integrate the thing on the left. That becomes y. It's a function of x. Integrate this. So that becomes x to the power 3. So bring the 3 underneath here. Makes it into a 6. This, that's all just constant. So PL squared 2, so 
uh, integrated constant, get constant times x. And then finally we're going to have our next constant, C2. So the boundary condition here will be when we're here, when x equals L, y will be 0. When x equals L, we expect this to equal 0. So notice 0 times the EI, that's 0. So 0 times something is equal to 0. So we've got minus P L cubed over 6 plus, notice that the dimensions are staying consistent, P L cubed over 2 plus C2. Doesn't look particularly nice. C2 equals. <sighs> I should be able to do it in my head. 3 over 6. 3 over 6. Take away a 6. Gives me 2 over 6. Leaves me with a third. And that would be minus third. PL cubed. Right. So I can now write out all that junk to find part A. So the equation elastic curve. So deformation. Let's bring the EI back underneath and we end up with Y equals 1 over EI. Open my bracket. Go back to this thing here. So we've got minus PX to the power 3 divided by 6 plus P times by L squared divided by 2 times by X and then C2 which I found minus PL cubed over 3. Got 6's and 3's there. <laughs> Tempted to take them out. Yeah, I think I'll take out the 6. So, uh, and also P actually. So we've got P 6 E I. Uh, that leaves me with minus X to the power 3. P's gone. 6, that will be a half is. Three sixes. L squared x, and a third is two sixes minus two L cubed. Okay, I think that's good enough. So reasonable looking polynomial there. I'm happy with that. So that is part A done. The deflection at the free end. Okay, well you deflection at the free end. Well okay that that is when x equals zero. Yeah, so deflection here, x equals zero. So set the x to be zero. 0, 0 leaves us with minus third P L cubed divided by 3 E I. Okay, so 2 over 6 is a third. Is that correct? Yes, Ian, that is correct. Alright. So, cracking through it now. The slope at the free end. 
Right, so for that I need to go back to this equation, which I should rewrite. So we've got delta y over delta x. Sorry. Can't see it. Bring the ei down back onto the right hand side minus p x squared over 2 plus p l squared over 2 and we want to know what is the deflection when x equals 0 so that's going to go and uh, that gives me p l squared 2 e i Right, so that's a positive, so we are expecting the beam to deflect like that. So it's going down and it's deflecting upwards. Okay. Uh, yeah, by the way, that's that is the correct answer. Right, so I'm going to go and get a latte and uh, do four point three.